Hi everyone, the topic that we are going to talk about is food spoilage in milk, fermented and non-fermented dairy products. Let us tell you more about milk, fermented dairy products and non-fermented dairy products. Milk is the secreted fluid of the mammary glands of female mammals. The examples are cow's milk and goat's milk. Fermented dairy products are products derived from milk that have been fermented with lactic acid bacteria such as lactobacillus. Non-fermented dairy products are products that are derived from the milk but does not undergo any fermentation process. In this experiment, three different products are used and each product represents a category. The food products used are cow's milk, yogurt and whipping cream. Each of the food products used has their own unique characteristic. For cow's milk, we have chosen this low-fat milk product. For this milk, the main nutrients are protein and carbohydrate. The carbohydrates are mostly made out of lactose and the fat content is only 1 gram per 100 ml. It is to be kept refrigerated at below 4 degrees Celsius and is supposed to be consumed within 3 days after opening. The yogurt that we are using is this low-fat natural plain yogurt. The main nutrients in yogurt are carbohydrates and protein. Yogurt has undergone bacterial fermentation by lactobacillus. Fermentation produces lactic acid which give a sour flavour. The acidic environment of yogurt serves as a preservation. It's also to be stored at refrigeration at below 4 degrees Celsius. This is the whipping cream that we have chosen to be used in the experiment. Whipping cream is derived from milk but is not fermented. It has a very high fat content which accounts for at least 30% of the total composition. In this whipping cream, the fat amount is 35.1 gram per 100 gram. It has undergone ultra-high temperature treatment so it can be stored at cool and dry condition. Food spoilage is the process leading to a product becoming either undesirable or unacceptable for human consumption. Associated with changes in moving, alteration in taste, smell, appearance or texture. The characteristics of food spoilage are unpleasant smell, unpleasant taste, color changes, texture changes and moldy. The main cause of food spoilage is the invasion by microorganisms such as mold, yeast and bacteria. This is known as microbial spoilage. Microbial spoilage is the degradation of carbohydrates, proteins and fat of food by microbes or their enzymes. The total carbohydrate is the highest in milk. Therefore, the common food decay of milk is fermentation. Fermentation is the chemical changes in organic substances produced by the action of enzymes of molds, bacteria or yeast. Milk contains sugar called lactose. Milk spoils when bacteria ferment the lactose to lactic acid and acetic acid, turning the milk sour. They produce acids which curdle the protein and forms sour curd. This is the bad fermentation. This is the formula of fermentation where saccharolytic microorganisms will ferment carbohydrates that produce acids, alcohol, and gases. The possible microorganisms are acalygenins and some species of lactobacillus, streptococcus, micrococcus, and bacillus that cause the production of gas, ropiness, and souring. When all the lactose is used up, there will be putrefaction, as milk is high in both carbohydrates and protein. Putrefaction is the biological decomposition of organic metals such as protein with production of ill-smelling and tasting. This is the formula of putrefaction, where proteolytic microorganism will digest the protein in the milk and produce amino acids, ammonia, and hydrogen sulfide. The possible microorganisms are Studiomonas putrefaxi and Studiomonas phoresis that contribute to the formation of brown milk. Other than Studiomonas putrefaxi and phoresis, Studiomonas aeruginosa is also the possible proteolytic microorganism that causes the spoilage of milk. Yogurt production uses two main bacterial cultures, which is Lactobacillus bulgaricus and Streptococcus thermophilus. Both of these bacteria are lactic acid bacteria that will produce lactic acid during normal growth. 
generally yogurt has longer shelf life as compared to milk. This is because during the fermentation of the production of yogurt, lactic acid produced will result in a decrease of pH of the yogurt. Lactic acid bacteria can tolerate acidic conditions generated. However, growth of other bacteria may be inhibited, therefore prolong the shelf life. The total carbohydrate in yogurt is the highest. Therefore, the common food decay of yogurt is fermentation. In this case, bad fermentation. Yeast and mold are the main spoilage microorganisms of yogurt. This is because the high acidity of yogurt inhibits growth of many bacteria. The total fat is the highest in whipping cream. Therefore, the common food decay of whipping cream is rancidity. Rancidity happens when fats undergo deteriorative changes with time, which result in undesirable flavor and odors. This is the formula of rancidity, where the lipolytic microorganism will digest the fat in whipping cream and produce fatty acid and glycerol. This causes the whipping cream to cuddle and develop a distinct sour smell. The possible microorganisms responsible for the spoilage of whipping cream are Crostidium species and coliform bacteria. Next, there are some parameters or tests that can be taken to detect and identify the particular spoilage microorganisms in these food products. To detect the presence of saccharolytic microorganisms in spoiled milk such as alkaligen species and streptococcus species, some of the indicators are studied. Indicators of alkaligen species are a ferment galactose, catalase positive, alkaline with litmus milk test, and are negative on hydrogen sulfide tests. Next, detections of streptococcus species can be done by identifying the type of hemolysis on blood agar. Blood agar is made up of tryptose and 5% sheep blood. Firstly, alpha hemolysis appears as a zone of partial hemolysis surrounding the colony often accompanied by a greenish discolorations of the agar. Example is streptococcus pneumonia. Second, beta hemolysis gives a clear red blood cell free zone surrounding the colony where there is a complete lysis of the red blood cells. Example is streptococcus pyogenes. Lastly, it is gamma reaction whereby there is no hemolysis or discolorations of the agar surrounding the colony. For biochemical tests, streptococcus species give negative result on catalase tests. Several biochemical tests can be done to detect the presence of proteolytic microorganisms such as Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Pseudomonas fluorescens, and Pseudomonas putrefaciens. The first biochemical test is the catalase test. The presence of Pseudomonas species is indicated by the positive test as bubbles are produced. Next, oxidase test can be used, and a positive test gives violet or purple color formation on the filter paper when tested using TMPD dihydrochloride, again indicating the presence of Pseudomonas species. However, negative results can be obtained in urease tests as no color changes observed. It means that Pseudomonas species do not have urease to break down urea into ammonia. Another confirmation test can be done is by culturing Pseudomonas species, particularly Pseudomonas aeruginosa on blood agar. It will cause beta hemolysis, metallic sheen, and blue or green pigments. To detect yeast and mold in spot yogurt, the appearance can be observed using knitted eyes. The presence of yeast are seen as white dots, which are usually creamy or crisp white in color, while the presence of mold gives a fuzzy appearance and the mold color ranges from white to orange and to green or black. Potato dextro agar PDA is a general purpose medium for yeast and mold that can be supplemented with acid or antibiotic to inhibit bacterial growth. PDA with tartaric acid is recommended for the microbial examinations of food and dairy products as bacterial growth is inhibited. Potato fusion and dextro promote fungal growth. Besides that, mod extract agar is suitable for the growth and detection of yeast and mold as it contains a high concentration of maltose. 
to inhibit bacterial growth, 10% lactic acid can be added to lower the pH of the medium. Antibiotics can be used to suppress the growth of bacteria too. Lactose broth and lauryl tryptosulfate, a selective medium, are also used to detect coliforms in dairy products. Lactose is used as primary fermentable sugar. When lactose fermenting bacteria metabolize lactose in the medium, the pH decreases, creating a bacterial static effect on competing microorganisms. Positive results for both broth are seen as productions of gas and acid, confirming lactose fermentation, thereby indicates the presence of coliforms. Now, I'm going to talk about source of contamination and factors that affect the growth of microbes in milk, fermented, and non fermented dairy products. Raw milk is a good medium for the growth of microorganisms, especially a variety of bacteria due to its highly nutritious nature. Milk contains abundant water and nutrients and also have nearly neutral pH. Spoilers bacteria are originated from environment. Milking equipment, mucus, hands, and surrounding air. Environmental contaminants represent a significant percentage of spoilage microflora. They are ubiquitous in the environment from which they can contaminate the car, equipment, water, and mucus hands. Milk fermented and non fermented dairy products can be contaminated in other ways, such as improper heating and cooling, exposed to air for too long. Food handler practice poor hygiene, failure of processing and packing system, especially development of biofilms on the equipment surfaces. Next, I'm going to talk about the factors that affect the growth of microbes in milk, fermented, and non fermented dairy products like water activity, pH, activity of specific enzymes, nutrient contents in milk, fermented, and non fermented dairy products, temperature, and availability of oxygen. Each microbes have their own optimum temperature and pH. As the temperature and pH increase, exceeding their optimum, the growth of microbes will slow down and inhibited, as well as the activity of enzymes also slow down due to denaturation. Each microbes have their optimum water activity in order to survive. If water activity is to reduce, the growth of microbes inhibited due to insufficient moisture. Microbes also require oxygen to grow. If the oxygen availability decreasing, the growth of microbes also inhibited. So how do we prevent spoilage of the products? Let's look at the preservation techniques on the particular microorganisms for milk, yogurt and whipping cream. One of the techniques to preserve milk is by pasteurization. It is the process of heating food to a specific temperature for an amount of time and then immediately cooling it after it removed from the heat. It is to inactivate the bacterial pathogens to assure longer shelf life of the milk. An example of pasteurization of milk is by doing heat treatment under 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds or 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Although it does not kill all vegetative bacteria cells or spores, it slows down the spoilage of the milk. Second technique to preserve milk is by sterilization. It is the process which eliminates and kills all forms of microbial life including transmissible agents. It can be achieved by applying heat, chemicals, irradiation, high pressure and filtration, or a combination of the techniques as mentioned. One of the examples of sterilization milk is done by UHT. UHT can be done with a temperature of 138 degrees Celsius for a minimum of 2 seconds. Another technique is by cooling the milk. Cooling can prevent growth of bacteria in milk and maintaining its quality for domestic consumption or during transport to stores destinations. For example, milk can be stored at mechanical refrigeration or cooling tanks between 1 and 4 degrees Celsius to ensure good milk quality. However, refrigeration does not reduce bacterial numbers as it only slows down their growth. So, it is advisable to consume the milk as early as possible before the expiry date. Packaging material is involved in preservation of yogurt. Manufacturers use packaging materials that are less permeable to oxygen to prevent from oxidation. Examples of materials are thermoform titanium dioxide pigmented high impact polystyrene with either an aluminum foil plastic laminate or a paper plastic laminated with heat seal lid or closure. For drinking yogurt products, 
They are packaged in PEHD bottles sealed with either aluminum foil laminate heat seal closures or with PELD caps. The materials of packaging are very important to yogurt preservation because once oxygen is in contact with the yogurt, yeast and molds are susceptible to the growth, leading to spoilage of the yogurt. Heat treatment are also used in preservation of yogurt. Yogurt mixes are heated to a temperature typically 85 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. It is to destroy all pathogenic bacteria, to inactivate all the enzymes that may be present in the milk including lipase, destroying most of the spoilage causing bacteria including thermodurics and most importantly to denature whey proteins that are beta lactoglobulin and alpha lactobumin. pH plays a role in preserving yogurts. During fermentation, bacterial culture were added. The acid of all, such as the live cultures used in yogurt fermentation can survive in low pH. Lactic acid increases the acidity of the final product. The amount of lactic acid present in low pH levels is ideal for yogurt. Hence, low pH prevents spoilage of the yogurt against other undesirable strains of bacteria because they cannot grow well in the condition. Since the potential pathogens are Clostridium species and coliform bacteria, the preservation techniques for whipping cream product is generally similar to both yogurt and milk. Pasteurization is done to eliminate pathogens and to destroy microorganisms that are pathogenic or cause spoilage to the products. The application of pasteurization can be done with heating the whipping cream for not less than 70 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes or 60 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Sterilization can be also done at 138 degrees Celsius for at least 2 seconds which is known as UHT and then immediately cool. Both sterilization and pasteurization done are effective in killing coliform bacteria and eliminating spores of Clostridium species. Packaging material is important to preserve the whipping cream. The product is integrated with aseptic packaging in sterile containers after sterilization. The packaging material must be entirely non-permeable to oxygen to prevent slightest chance of growth of pathogens in the food product. Furthermore, cooling can help preserve whipping cream. The product should be kept chilled in cooling tanks or refrigerator at temperature not more than 3 to 4 degrees Celsius to prevent growth of pathogenic bacteria. It is advisable to store the product not more than 3 days after opening to prevent contamination of pathogenic microbes and to maintain the freshness of the product.